Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I've spoken to you all. Um, I've actually been away from my virtual reality boxing for months now, been quite a while. Um, and I hate that I've been away from it because it's one of the number one things that I really loved to do to keep in shape. And it even made my reflexes faster, which was so freaking wonderful. So uh, today is the first day that I've gotten back and on it, and I couldn't do it before because I actually injured myself uh, on VR. So as a lot of you know, I tend to wear about four pounds per wrist when I do my workout. Now I find that doing the four pounds per wrist actually is very helpful. I find that it's helped me to increase speed a lot when I take those off of my wrists. Um, but I also find that it helps me to, it kind of helps my body to not swing overly wildly right? It helps my arms to have more control and uh, not swing in ways that might cause more injuries on the body, what have you. Uh, but there are some things we need to pay attention to, uh, to not get the kind of injuries that I got, right? So uh, one thing to think about is with my four pounds on my wrist, and when I do a jab where I uh, punch forward and pull back, so I'm basically snapping forward and back, um, in the real world, when you do a jab, you have a bag or a human head to take the energy of that jab. But when you're doing that with weights on your wrist, that snap forward and back is a lot of strain on your wrist. So, you know, I recommend doing um, never do full speed of a jab because I think it's going to put too much tension on your elbow. And for me, it also uh, created an, an injury and a strain in the muscle on top of my arm. So if you put your right arm, uh, your right hand facing you, the back of it, right? Your right hand, the back of your right hand facing you. Now, if you put one finger on your index finger knuckle and one finger on your thumb, and then from there, you just draw backwards down your arm, right in the middle of those two spots, that's where that muscle is that I seem to have injured. It got injured to the point where picking up a cup of coffee was difficult for me. And I believe that it may have had to do with uh, that snapping motion of forward and back. And also I got kind of a tennis elbow, so I kind of injured my elbow. So um, during this video I want to share with you now, I decided to um, not do a lot of the uh, hammer strikes that I had done in the past, um, be because at least those... Well, just because the total, doing a hard swing and completely straightening the elbow, I think that that just led to my elbow getting some injuries. Um, but uh, the reason I'm doing this video right now is because I just did about three rounds or four rounds. And during that time, I learned something because uh, I haven't done this in a long time. I'm out of shape, stuff like that. And I was not doing well against uh, Melky, this opponent here. And then all of a sudden, I started doing... Um, kind of like haymakers. I started doing a lot of haymaker type of, of, of punches. And what I learned was I think the VR algorithm uh, sees a long, right? If my hand is all, all the way to my right and I swing and then it goes all the way to my left, then it appears that the algorithm takes that as powerful, as a powerful punch, right? If I go from the right and I hit the jaw in front of me and I stop six inches beyond that, I think the algorithm would take that as a less powerful strike. So once I started doing these haymaker type of basically a 180 circle, circular, take the fist right from the right to the left and do a circular uh, half of a circle, a full 180, I, I, I started adding that to my fight with this guy and it seemed to have created great injury on the guy. So that's one thing I wanted to show you to add to your arsenal of when to, how to get a really powerful uh, punch, what have you. Um, I think I'll just finish talking after we go ahead and start this video so you could kind of just watch a few things. Remember, I'm completely out of practice on this, uh, but I do have some concepts to share with you. Uh, I also will be talking about the no mind principle. All right. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm showing you all of my customizations. Um, so you could take screenshots if you want to see every customization that I got going here. Um, I have this set up to where I only do one round per player. I've told you before I do that so I can go from player to player to player to player, uh, which I'm not doing today, but uh, so I could just do one round and get out of it 
and then do what have you. And there was a nice move right there. That makes no sense. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, so anyway, you're going to see these. Uh, by the way, I'm going to look very lazy in here. I do have the four pounds on each wrist. But I'm basically experimenting with the, um, the haymaker types, or what should we call them? Let's call them the 180 degree swings, right? That goes from completely the far right to completely the far left. Uh, and even doing it with two hands wherever I can. And now there I did it also on the downstroke, with kind of like the hammer strikes, right? I said I was going to avoid the hammer strikes, but in this case, if I do the hammer strikes, you know, and use the same principle as a full 180 downward uh, half circle, uh, you know, and, uh, and try not to go full force so I don't really injure my elbow and stuff like that, but that full, one, that full half a circle allows me to not get the injuries I would get from a snapping um, jab, right? So instead of the snapping jab, I'm just feeling a little bit better about the hammer strike, a half circle type of things. Um, I already did about four rounds. I'm going to be talking about some very interesting no mind principle here also. Um, but I've already done about four rounds. I am pretty, pretty lazy here. I am out of shape. Uh, you don't get to hear all my heavy breathing here because I'm recording this after the video has already been made. But another concept that I want to share with you is this, uh, this really fascinating no mind principle. And in, in business and in psychology, and they also call this getting into flow state, right? So when we get, in, you know, in the ancient Chinese uh, secret uh, scenario, they might call that the no mind, right? It's when you get in that state where the subconscious uh, basically acts in the most efficient way possible. When you get into the end, this flow state in business is the same thing. Uh, people who get into flow state, that's where they tend to have aha moments. Or if you hit, see a speaker uh, up uh, giving a speech about something, and that person just flows, and, and it's almost like everything they say is perfect, uh, that's like a flow state. But in, in this martial arts and fighting type thing, you know, we'll call it that flow state or no mind principle. Um, and I'm going to be doing that uh, here a little later in the fight, you know, as I go along, uh, just to experiment with that a little bit more. And so the flow state in, in fighting, that state is really about uh, eliminating ego, uh, eliminating anger, right? Um, you know, you see like Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, you know, if they talk all their, well, Muhammad Ali would talk sometimes during the fight. But he was still kind of in a flow state because he was so relaxed and confident about what he could accomplish. So, okay, now what you just saw me do, I basically raised my arms up in the air and created like this circle. I raised two arms in the air and created a circle. Now what that is is me letting you know when I'm uh, recalibrating myself back into flow state. Um, so, but what tends to happen when I try this flow state or no mind principle, there I just did it again. I re-got myself in that state. Now, oftentimes, that state only uh, lasts for about four or five punches worth, I found. And the reason why that tends to happen is because I'll get in the state, and then I'll be so surprised at how well I'm doing that uh, the surprise itself will get my conscious mind restarted again. And that, once again, takes us out of the ultra-efficient subconscious flow state, right? Because when we start fearing, when we start getting frustrated, when we start questioning in our, in our mind as we go, oh, he's got me here, he's got me here, how do I avoid this, how do I dodge this? All this questioning, this is all what happens during the learning process, right? Um, but when we let go of all fear, all anger, and all ego, right? The ego is what brings me out of the state, right? Because I'm excited that I, that, I, um, that I did well, right? And that excitement, which is kind of an ego in a sense, that brings me out of the flow state, right? And then I start getting hit again. And I think there's ways that we can in increase the length of the flow state, you know, as we continue. But one of the ways that I get into this flow state is I kind of blur my vision and I stop looking at my opponent's chest and fists and hands and face. Instead, I look off to the left of my opponent and then I allow my eyes to blur. And so I'm basically looking out kind of into the audience, into the air, but I'm kind of just looking at one spot, but not focusing on one spot. 
My eyes are pointed to one spot, but in reality I'm unfocusing my eyes. So my subconscious can just see everything that's happening. And when I do this, I tend to, it almost like slows down time. And, and what it's really doing is it's creating an ultra focus and the highest efficiency of what you're capable of doing in any event, right? And so, and so that's what I do to get into the flow state, right? Eliminate all anger, eliminate all emotion, eliminate all thoughts, and just allow the subconscious mind to, to uh, do everything that, that... See, because what happens is when we practice this VR boxing and stuff like that, or we, we practice getting good at anything, what happened? There we go. I just got back in the flow state. Let's see how we do for a second. Now, what I'm doing, I'm just staring off to the left of his body. And uh, when I do that, it's like I see what's coming faster. It's like my mind is so much more efficient. And then, oh, what I just did, I shot my fist up in the air. When you see me do that, it's me letting you know I, I exited the flow state and I'm aware of it. This is me re-entering the flow state. Let's see how I do for a moment. Okay, I got hit, so I didn't stay in it uh, as long as I would have liked to. I'm also quite exhausted. Now, that throwing the arms up is just verifying that I am out of the flow state. I'm like totally back focusing on his body, his reactions, focusing, I, I've got the conscious mind completely involved and now I'm back in flow state. Let's see how that goes. Now you see the movements are much more smooth and relaxed. Right? I'm probably out of it right now. I threw the arms up in the air, that means I'm out of flow state. Right? So being exhausted is gonna make you also not last as long, so to speak. But let's understand this flow state, right? So a lot of people think, uh, and I've talked about this before, in martial arts, they say, ki right? And um, yeah, I get it. You know, maybe you're breaking a piece of wood and you ki at the, at the breaking moment. I get that kind of stuff. But, you know, getting all tense, tensing your body, you know, grunting and ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and all that stuff, you know, that really just wastes energy. And you actually can get uh, more power, um, by kind of letting all that go, uh, by kind of not getting all tensed up, right? You, re you preserve a lot of energy um, and things like that. Of course, Bruce Lee in the movies, he made all the noises. He's like, why, you know, and all this stuff. But uh, really, if you really pay attention, and of course in the movies though, he's, he's creating a movie, right? There's gotta be some excitement, some, a little noise here and there. But, you know, if you really look at him fighting, uh, you know, he tends to be pretty relaxed. He, 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 he stays in a flow state almost all the time, right? Okay, there's me getting in flow again. Let's see what I do. I almost slow down my motions because it's almost like I see things coming much faster. I, I already exited. Right? So the flow state thing also, I remember a, um, there was a story about a, a, a martial arts master. He would go into uh, neighborhood dojos just to spar with people here and there. But he would, when he would spar with people, he would get this attitude like, I'm not trying to defeat anyone or beat anyone. He'd eliminate ego through that kind of a thought process. He would say, what all I'm going to do is help a person get to where their energy is trying to go, <laughs> right? So if someone charges at him, he would use his martial arts and just allow them to follow through. In his mind, he's like, okay, you want to go that way? There you go, you'll go that way. So it's kind of like judo concepts, a bit, redirecting energy, right? But that state of mind of, it's almost like a state of mind of, of loving kindness. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but there really is some power in a loving kindness state of mind. When you're in that state of mind, you're in a very efficient state of mind because all the negative energies of tension, of grunting, of worry, of struggle, all those things take so much mental energy. And when you can eliminate those things, then that's when you get into flow. That's when you get into ultra efficiency. That's when the subconscious takes all the experiences you have. You see, because you can't become great in flow if you didn't have experiences that taught you lessons, right? So we don't just get into flow with, it. you don't just go out and fight somebody when you never fought before and you're in flow and you're the master, of course not. Flow requires expertise. Flow requires practice, learning, um, you know, getting knocked down, learning how to avoid that. It requires practice, practice, practice. Lucky, lucky. Comment. Subscribe now.